What's going on guys? Back at it again with another Miri build here for you guys on the channel. This one, as you can see right in front of you, is on a fire staff wielding magic dealing companion. And therefore, I am calling this build the Master Mage. This one was pretty straightforward, guys. I didn't really have too much difficulty building this one at all. She deals a pretty decent amount of damage, which for a companion says a lot, seeing as they don't do a lot of damage altogether. So this one was a lot of fun to put together, guys. If you guys are excited for this build, do me a huge favor, drop a like on this video. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed because it really does help this channel grow. So enough yapping for me, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into this build and see what she has to offer. All right, guys, so first things first, we're going to be taking a look at her Dark Elf skills, her passive abilities, which is called Dynamic. Because of dynamic, she increases damage done by 3%, which is going to be very important in this build. Every companion companion seems to have this, so it's not very unique uh, to Miri or to this, uh, I guess, Dark Elf skill line. Uh, but what is unique is the fact that she has 3% added to her healing done, which could help or which does help in her survivability and also healing you as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to our number one skill in our bar. And that is destruction, a uh, destructive blast. Miri blasts an enemy with magic dealing 10,626 magic damage. And specifically for the flyer staff version or type for this build is the flame blast knocks them back eight meters and stuns them for 2.5 seconds so not only does it do that initial 10,626 magic damage but it also has the usability of stunning them for two and a half seconds which of course could mean the difference between life and death if you need just that little bit of extra time to heal or if you need that little bit of extra time to have a I guess stress-free damage deal so for the 2.5 seconds you don't have to worry about them really attacking you very much or anything like that because you could just off them in those 2.5 seconds moving on to the number two skill elemental barricade miri slams her staff down oh wait really quick the cooldown is 16 seconds to this so it is on the higher end but not really too bad to say the least elemental blockade uh Miri Alenda slams their staff down to create an elemental wall in front of them dealing 10,611 magic damage over 8 seconds with a cooldown of 8 seconds. So because the cooldown is 8 seconds and it does deal a damage over time of 8 seconds, she is able to keep this ability up 100% of the time, which you guys will see later on when we solo a world boss, or at least attempt to. There is a lot of players online right now since there is an event going on. So I'm going to be trying my best to a bare minimum get her to solo at least a good chunk of the fight. But let's cross our fingers to see if we can actually solo an entire boss fight. But that's for later. Great skill nonetheless. Life Siphon. Miri siphons the vigor from the blood of the enemies nearby dealing 5,313 magic damage and healing themselves and their allies for 4,481 health. The good thing about this specific skill is that it works twofold. Not only is it a heal for you and her of 4,481, which admittingly isn't a lot, but it does make a little bit of a difference, right? But this acts as her heal, but it also does magic damage of 5,313, so it actually double dips in this specific situation. Therefore, actually creating a situation in which she deals damage and heals at the same time, which kinda really helps out on her Dark Elf passive dynamic. Great skill to have on Miri, in my opinion. But yeah, Starfall. This is from your Mage's Guild skill line. Starfall reads as uh, Miri calls a comet down from the constellations to blast an enemy dealing 10,662 
or in 26 flame damage. This is essentially just a skill that's going to consistently happen over time see, uh, uh, because she has the cooldown of 8 seconds. The cooldown is tiny for what this skill does in terms of damage. Because it does 10,000 damage oh, and it does it every 8 seconds, this increases the DPS of Miri quite substantially. Highly recommend having this skill on your Magicka DPSs or just period DPSs in general because it does actually deal a lot of damage because of the high damage and the low cooldown. Very, very important skill for this specific build. Last but not least, on the regular bar itself is Life Absorption. Miri steals the enemy's life force dealing 5,313 magic damage and healing themselves or an ally around them for 8,961 health. This again, similar to Life, uh, to, uh, life Siphon, is basically giving you twofold. One, a damage of 5,313 magic damage, but also gives you or her a heal of 8,961 health, which again, really helps with the survivability of Miri. On top of that, it really does do a little bit of damage, which is 5,313, which collaboratively speaking with the rest of her skills, really does add on to it. The cooldown is average as well at 12 seconds, so really in all reality, it really is a good skill to have all the way around because of the double dipping nature that this skill has. And of course, the ultimate, which is Impeccable Shot. Miri marks an enemy and exposes their weakness, causing them to take 20% more damage for 3 seconds. While the enemy is exposed, they build up to a single killing shot unleashing a massive bolt that deals 31,878 physical damage. This skill, no secret here guys, you guys have heard me preach this every time I get to her ultimate. This is a fantastic ultimate guys. Not only does it do a massive amount of damage in terms of her bolt quote unquote that she fires off, which deals 31,878 physical damage, but also opens up an additional 20% more damage that you can deal to the enemy over a period of 3 seconds. So if you are able to predict this coming or if you activate it yourself, this skill comes in clutch because you're able to do a lot of damage in those 3 seconds. And if you're good at light attack weaving and you're good at the whole DPS side of the game, this is going to be an important skill to have. Of course, so I highly recommend you max out your companion just for this skill alone. Moving on to gear, so I like to emulate my companion builds in the same fashion that I build my own characters, right? And that is a two 5P sets and a two piece monster set. Of course, monster sets aren't really a thing for companions, so we'll just call it a two piece. Starting off with our first two piece is medium, both of them head and shoulders aggressive aggressive increases the damage done by 1.7 percent per piece is of course assuming you have purple gear so of course anything that's going to increase the damage done is important to a dps build therefore the first two piece set is going to be two pieces of medium companions gear of aggressive moving on to the first five piece set which is going to be for the body and that is going to be focused all in medium and in uh, focused increases critical strike rating by 569 so the fact that she's going to be potentially doing more damage in terms of critical strikes this really does help increase the dps and of course they're all medium because the medium passive actually gives you more damage done based on the amount of pieces that you have in medium equipped it so again not only do you have the aggressive increases your damage but also your medium armor passives uh, I'll actually show you really quick. It's called flexibility. Uh, increases damage done by 1% for each piece of medium equipped uh, armor equipped, which is 7% at this moment in time because again, all body pieces are medium. So you're getting more damage done from your uh, medium armor passives and of course from aggressive and of course a little bit of critical strike rating because of your focused pieces. And for the final five-piece set, which the weapon counts as a two-piece, uh, just so you guys know, 
is going to be go figure aggressive aggressive again deals 1.7 or increases uh damage done by 1.7 percent per piece except for the inferno staff because the inferno staff counts as two pieces therefore making it a 3.4 percent altogether your damage is being increased quite substantially because of these aggressive pieces not to mention the focus critical strike rating increase as well this ends up be ended up being a very good balance in my opinion especially for this specific build and you'll see later on that this build really does do a pretty decent amount of damage so with that being said, let's go ahead and go over to the house and check out Miri's fashion. In terms of fashion, guys, this is very good. This is going to be very boring, but I liked it like this, okay? So the costume that she's wearing is a Telvan Telvani Master Wizard, which is a crown shop item. I think this outfit looks super fantastic on its own. Because of that, I actually don't have any dyes equipped on her whatsoever because I like this outfit a lot. Now, you can, of course, test it out yourself. There is a lot of different variations in which you can go with. But, I don't know. I kind of really liked the way that it looks on its own. But, there's that. In terms of the weapon, she, she is wearing Dark Elf Staff 4. And the dyes are Obsidian Black, Cold Harbor Ash Black, and of course, Rank 10 Materials. But let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of her fashion, guys. I know it's nothing spectacular, but I did really like the way this aesthetic looks on its own. With that being said, let's go ahead and try to see if we can solo a world boss. There is a ton of players online right now due to the fact that there is an event going on right now. The first of its kind, by the way. But we'll see. Hopefully we can pull it off. If not... We should hopefully get a good idea of the damage that she can do based on her skills. So, let's go see what we could do. And there you have it guys, the Master Mage has been officially completed here on the channel. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys thought of this specific build, if you guys are going to be using it for yourselves or anything of that nature. Frankly speaking, I actually enjoyed this build from the aesthetics down to the usability of this companion. I did like this build quite substantially as a matter of fact, so I didn't really have any problems or issues with that whatsoever the only complaint that i have is that i kind of wish she had more damage dealing abilities that were usable in this specific build nothing that i really enjoyed so i had to kind of double dip into the destruction staff skill line in order to fill those gaps not necessarily a problem but still i kind of wish there was a little bit more of the night blade ish aesthetic to this specific build Neither here nor there, just a personal preference of mine, of course. But, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, drop a like on this video. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, because it really does help this channel grow. So, with that being said, catch you guys in the next one. Deuces!